Flo, and welcome to a Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. We're going to continue our Bible study today in the book of Isaiah, and we are on the 25th chapter for this uh, particular video. And as we go forward reading in the book of uh, Isaiah in this chapter, we're going to see Isaiah is going forward praising God, okay? He's just giving God a lot of praise and admonition and uh worshiping him for his his faithfulness his truth and his wonderfulness and his protection and all the good things that he does for us and so isaiah is praising god in reference to all that he is and the fact that he is god okay so it begins with O lord thou art my god i will exalt thee i will praise thy name for thou hast done wonderful things thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth that's you know what we see when we look at God, you know, he's faithful. He's very faithful and he's truth. He's the truth. For thou hast made a, of a city a heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city, for it shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify you. The city of the terrible nations shall fear you. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, and a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Okay, so we see, you know, how much of a mighty, powerful God we have for us. Thou shalt uh, bring down the noise of strangers, as the heat in a dry place, for even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, for the branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. Okay. Speaking of that branch, you know, like in reference to, you know, how he uses Jesus Christ and speaks of him as a branch because he is a king leader over the kingdom of uh, kingdom of God in the earth as it became the new covenant. Well, under the New Testament, well, in the Old Testament, he's speaking of that branch. And in this particular instance, he's speaking of, the, of course, the opposing enemy being that branch and then having all of his branch, his uh leaves that grow out from him, which would be those that do the work that he does also, Lucifer, okay? Because that's who he's speaking of in reference to when he uses that word branch in this particular verse, because we know, again, he uses it He uses it to describe uh, Jesus Christ and leadership position. So he's using it again, basically, to describe a leadership position individual who has others around them because he says the branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. Okay. So then he says, uh, and in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the leaves of fat things full of marrow and of wines on the leaves. Well refined. Okay. So, uh, there will be, in this mountain, he said, he says, a host, the Lord of hosts, may, he will make unto all people a feast. So there will be a feasting in the holy mountain of God, okay? Because that's what he's talking of in this reference. Going into uh, another verse and then also oh, another statement. And we're going to see that as we read it. But before I go continue on to it, I want to stop here and take a look at Isaiah chapter 2. And I'm going to look at that in reference to um, what was just said about the feasting, you know, as he renews everything for the people. Chapter 2, and then chapter 2, and beginning with verse 2. It show, okay, it actually, he begins, I'm going to start with verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amaz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. He says, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Now, of course, we know this is in reference to after Jerusalem, after God goes through with his judgment and his chastisement against the people in Jerusalem, all the other nations and, of course, his nation. And then as he begins to come forward with salvation for, uh, you know, as we know of it today from the New Testament, okay, salvation with Jesus Christ. 
Okay, so then he says, and many people shall go and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And again, that's speaking of in that particular moment in time, whenever God goes in to restore Jerusalem after he's went through with his judgment. And then also it speaks of, again, the coming of salvation, okay? Because the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills is a prophetic utterance of the future of Christ Jesus coming with salvation in the house of the Lord. And then he goes on, uh, continuing on with our, um, hmm, no, actually Isaiah 56. Let me go to that too. I have that marked for this Bible study. Isaiah 56, and this whole chapter reflects basically on that, on the chapter of 25 that we're reading also in reference to salvation coming after the effect, okay, after the judgment goes forward from God and he begins to reestablish the people. He will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. For he will swallow up death in victory and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall be, shall he take away from of all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. Okay, so there we see and there we have it. As he says, he's going to take away of, of all, all the earth. Okay, all the rebuke from his people. And destroy in, in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all the people. Okay. And that, of course, we know is the coming of Christ Jesus because he, you know, he destroys that veil is done away with with Christ because um, we have a Savior, intercessor, and we have the Holy Spirit. Okay, so going on here, I'm back in uh, Isaiah 25, he begins with in verse 9, and it shall be said in that day. This is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hallelujah. Now that is the day, of course, we can speak of that day right now too, okay? Because he saved us from our own selves with a salvation through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And converting us into the kingdom, into his kingdom, okay? Hallelujah for that. And so then let's go over here to Isaiah chapter 8. chapter 8 and then verse 17 where he says and I will wait upon the Lord that hides his, his face from the house of Jacob and I will look for him behold I and the children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwells in Mount Zion so there will be us reestablishing okay is what he is speaking of in this going forward with salvation and then he says in verse 10 for in this mountain shall the land of i'm sorry for in this mountain shall the hand of the lord rest okay and moab shall be trodden down under him even as a straw is under and trodden down from a dunghill okay and he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them as he that swims spreads forth his hands to swim and he shall bring down their pride together with their spoils and their hands and the fortress of on of them on high and the wall and thy walls shall be brought down low lay low and bring to the ground even to the dust okay and at, at that time because moab exalted itself over the kingdom of judah god is saying he's going to bring them down in verse 10 moab shall be trodden down under him and um he did speak of Moab to, Jer to Jeremiah also, and we read about that in 
Jeremiah's chapter 25, the destruction of uh, Moab. 25 and then verse 21, Edom and Moab and the children of Ammon also take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and they were given it also. And that's Jeremiah 25. And then we can also see him uh, as he reflected on the Moab Moabites in the book of Zephaniah and also in the book of Amos. Okay, but nevertheless, as he said, because of their pride, will, there be, will they be destroyed? And he did speak of it in uh, Isaiah, let's see, chapter 15, did I do that one? Chapter 15. And that whole particular, chapter 15, this whole chapter went into the destruction of Moab. <clears throat> the burden of Moab, uh, because in the night they are laid waste and brought to silence. Because in the night, Kerr of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. Again, so that just speaks of the destruction of Moab. And then uh, chapter 16, same book, Isaiah, verse 6. We have heard of the pride of Moab, for he's very proud even of his haughtiness and his pride and his wrath, but his lies shall not be so. Okay, because Moab was a liar, the Moabites were liars, and they continued to lie upon the children of Israel. And then God also uh, decreed and declared that their judgment would come forward toward them also. Other scriptures I have in reference to Moab and the Moabites would be uh, Jeremiah chapter 48. Jeremiah 48. He also had some words in this chapter in reference to Moab too. And actually this whole book too, against Moab, thus says the Lord God of hosts uh, of Israel. Woe unto Nebo, for it is spoiled, and there shall be no more praise of Moab. Verse 2. Verse 4, Moab is destroyed. Her little ones have caused a cry to be heard. Okay, that's after the destruction. <clears throat> and then same, same, same chapter 48 in the book of Jeremiah, verse 26, he says, Make him drunk, for he magnifies himself against the Lord. Moab also shall wallow in his vomit, and he also shall be in derision. So that was in the Ammonites, chapter 49. Uh, Jeremiah had notes in reference to them concerning the Ammonites. Thus says the Lord, has Israel no sons? Has he no heir? And then as he goes forward to speak in reference to them, because we know that they are... Uh, part of and related to and in the genealogy of Moab and the Moabites. I think that's going to conclude all of it. All of the Moabite judgments that I'm going to speak of with this chapter. That's pretty much going to be it for the whole chapter. All right, so God bless you. God be with you. And again, this was a chapter, a small little chapter of praise and worship to our Heavenly Father because truly he's always worthy of it because he's so faithful. And so Isaiah was going forward just praising God for all of his strength and all the things that he does. And uh, of course, for his amazing, saving, salvation, wonderful grace that he has for us. All right, God bless you, God be with you, and I will see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel.